The Buddha lists the factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. Right speech comes right after right resolve. In other words, once you've understood what the big problem in life is, the problem of suffering, and that the problem comes from within, it comes from which you're acting, what you're choosing to do, starting with the thoughts in the mind. And then from the thoughts in the mind, it comes out in your mouth. In other words, that's the first place you should see that you actually are on the path to the things that you say, the type of speech you engage in. The Buddha lists four kinds of speech to avoid. There's lying, when you misrepresent the truth intentionally. Device of speech, when you try to split people apart. Harsh speech, when you speak in ways that are meant to hurt people's feelings. And then idle chatter, where you open your mouth and don't have any clear intention as to what's going to come out, and why it's going to come out. Speaking just to pass the day, speaking just to get things off your chest, speaking to express your feelings. These are all kinds of speech we have to avoid. Now, of those four, only one has a precept, the precept against lying, because that's clearly defined. Speech can either be true or false, meant to represent the truth as you see it or to misrepresent it. And the Buddha gives no place for any lies at all, white lies. Innocent lies, harmless lies, all of them, he says, are harmful. They're all to be avoided. That's why there's a precept. Now, with divisive speech, there are times when you have to warn someone. They seem to be getting into a relationship with someone you know is harmful. You have to look at your motivation. You have to look at the situation. But there is that exemption, which is why there's no precept. The same with harsh speech. Sometimes there are occasions when you have to speak in ways that might sound hurtful, just to catch people's attention. Again, you have to be very clear about your intentions, and you have to be clear about your reasons for engaging in that kind of speech. So again, there's no precept. Now, the fact that there's no precept against these two types of speech doesn't mean that they're not important. Because these are the two kinds of speech that drive people apart, that create disharmony in the group. This is one of the more frustrating things about coming back to the States after having been in Thailand. Over there, people are more conscious of the fact that harmony in a group is something that's to be preserved, something to be valued, and realizing that groups can become disharmonious very easily. You have to be really careful about what you say. Whereas over here, th people seem to value harmony a lot less. They say, if this person wants to leave the group, that's perfectly fine with me. But that's destructive and selfish. This is where we take our attitude towards freedom, and we don't really understand the Buddhist attitude towards freedom. For us, freedom of speech means saying whatever you want to say. without being forbidden. For the Buddha, freedom of speech means the freedom to say skillful things. In other words, you're free from the influence of your defilements, free from the influence of wrong view, free from the influence of wrong resolve. You're free to be wise in what you're saying. That's true freedom. And that's a freedom that has to be earned, not in the sense that 
someone else is going to say, well, now you're free to be wise. But you have to develop the abilities to understand what, what is wise speech and how to read the results of your speech and to realize that your speech has implications and will have consequences. And you have to think about those consequences before you even open your mouth. And John Fung had a nice comment. He says, you've got to think before you speak. Don't be the sort of person who speaks and then has to think about it afterwards. In other words, that kind of thinking afterwards comes with the realization, okay, I said something I, something, I, said something I shouldn't have said. By that time it's too late. Those words have been let out into the world. You want to think first. And always ask yourself those three questions. One, is it true? Two, is it beneficial? And three, is this the right time to say things that are pleasing or the right time to say things that are displeasing? The times that are needed to say things displeasing are very rare. It's a sign of a lot more skill when you have difficulty with someone and you can get your emotions under control. And you can express your thoughts in ways that they will be happy to hear. And even when you're saying things that are unpleasant, you have to show respect for the other person. Don't show disdain. Don't show contempt. Choose the right time, the right place, the right situation to say those things. And even though it sounds like you're hemming in your speech with lots of conditions, this is the speech that's really free. It's free to be wise, free to be skillful. So as we deal with one another, we should keep this in mind all the time. We're a small group. For the monastery to succeed, it depends on the harmony of the group. So try to speak in ways that are conducive to harmony. Speak in ways that will help all of us be happy to be here as part of the group. Always keep the larger picture in mind before you open your mouth. Because, of course, this is a way of training the mind. That's what the Buddha calls verbal fabrication, when you think about things and then you comment on, on the mind, in the mind. It'll very quickly come out in your speech outside. So you're training your directed thoughts, you're training your evalua acts of evaluation in preparation for the practice of concentration. Because as we sit here meditating, we have to talk to ourselves. For the concentration to go well, we have to engage in right speech inside, too. Telling ourselves things that are true, telling ourselves things that will not divide the mind as it's trying to get gathered together. Not speaking in harsh ways that discourage ourselves. And not just engaging in random idle chatter. And of course, where do we get practice with that kind of speech? We'll practice with what we say to other people. So recognize the training of the mouth is an important part of the training of the mind. And remember what true freedom of speech means. Speech is not a slave to your defilement. It's not a slave to your greed or to your anger or your delusion. It's speech that's free to be harmonious and wise. 